Okay, so let's get into it. We're doing a deep dive on this phenomenon that meteorologists are calling the Great Eurasian Weather Divergence. Mm -hmm. And this isn't just, you know, some severe winter weather. We're talking about a genuine structural fracture in the entire hemispheric circulation. That's right. It's a huge deal. We are tracking a really critical week from December 27th through about January 4th. Where you have these two, well, violently opposed weather regimes. Yeah, You've cool. got extreme storms and extreme cold just dominating Europe and Asia at the same time. And the mechanical driver here is, uh, it's really the key. It all stems from this unprecedented major sudden stratospheric warming in SSW that kicked off back in late November. Right. That event basically caused the stratospheric polar vortex to structurally split. It collapsed and it's essentially dumping its whole reservoir of frigid Arctic air right into the mid latitudes. And this collapse isn't happening in a vacuum, is it? Yeah. There are other things making it worse. No, it's being amplified. You've got a weak La Nina in the background, but the big one is a strongly negative Arctic oscillation. Which, for you listening, that basically means high pressure systems get stuck over the Arctic. They act like a block, forcing all that cold air south and just locking the pattern in place. And that locked in pattern is just turbocharging storm systems in the West. Western Europe, so Ireland, the UK, Northern France, they're seeing intense Atlantic storms. Yeah. And they're fueled by these unseasonably warm sea surface temperatures. And you're tracking one in particular, right? Storm Chandra? We are. It's forecast to undergo what we call explosive cyclogenesis. Which means its central pressure is just going to plummet. Exactly. We're talking a drop of more than 24 millibars in only 24 hours. I saw a projection it could hit 930 millibars. <laughs> Wait. When you start comparing a winter storm's pressure to a Category 3 hurricane, are the dynamics really comparable? Or is that more of a, you know, a technical flag? It's a bit of both. Okay. The sustained winds might not be exactly like a hurricane, but that sheer rapid pressure drop creates massive wind and storm surge. The overall destructive potential, yeah, it's in the same league. So the West is dealing with wind and water first. But then there's a transition, a critical one, to a Rex block configuration right around the new year. What is that? A Rex block is, well, it's when a powerful high pressure system parks itself right on top of a low pressure system. It just freezes the whole pattern. Completely stalls it out. And the flow shifts from wet and windy to this bitter, dry, easterly flow. That's the real killer because all that moisture from the December storms freezes solid, widespread black ice. So while the West is fighting ice, Central Europe, Germany, Poland, they're in the direct collision zone. That's the most hazardous area. It's where that warm maritime air slams into the retreating Arctic air. And you get an inversion. A dangerous thermal inversion, yeah. The result is supercooled rain that freezes instantly on contact, creating these dreaded ice shells. We're not talking about a thin glaze. No, we're talking about a coating of clear, solid ice. It could be one to three centimeters thick. That's enough to snap power lines and paralyze transport, a massive infrastructure threat. And if we go even further east. Yeah. Then you hit the deep continental freeze. In Moscow, European Russia, temperatures are set to plunge after the new year. We're looking at night lows down towards minus 20 Celsius. Huge strain on heating systems. And in Kazakhstan, it's even worse. Lethal cold dropping to minus 30 with persistent ice fog that grounds airplanes. It's a direct threat to life. And we can't forget the orographic effects in the mountains. The Caucasus, exactly. They could see over 100 centimeters of snow in places like Gudari. That means a critical avalanche danger. Roads will have to be closed. So you have three distinct high impact crises happening all at once across the continent. And when you step back, you realize this divergence is a powerful symptom of Arctic amplification. As the Arctic warms so fast, it weakens the temperature gradient that normally keeps the jet stream strong and stable. So the jet stream gets wavier, more meandering. It wanders all over the place. And that's what allows for these two extremes to happen at the same time. So the great irony here is that a warming climate doesn't just mean milder winters. It actually makes the cold snaps we do get more violent. That's it, exactly. This volatility gives you record-breaking cold from polar vortex instability, and at the same time, more intense precipitation because a warmer atmosphere just holds more moisture. Which means we need infrastructure that can handle both extremes. Yes, systems that can withstand both ice shells and bomb cyclones. Because this great Eurasian weather divergence, it really is a harbinger of a new era of winter volatility, and that's the dual threat reality you need to internalize.